Hey everyone, Caduce, co-founder of Informail here, bringing you this very, very awesome video on hard versus soft call to actions in your cold email and how to skyrocket your reply rate, your booking rates, etc. by understanding the difference between what a hard and soft call to action really is and what it means, right? And I see a lot of people complain uh, about the results their cold email campaigns are getting, low reply rates, they can never book a meeting, they can never sign new clients, and it's really because they don't understand the usage of hard versus soft call to actions, right? And I will basically show you an illustration, and before we get started with that, I'm just going to explain you know, briefly who I am, because this is going to go on YouTube. I'm Caduce, co-founder of Informail. I help businesses set up cold email infrastructures to outreach other businesses for free without setting up email records, SPF, DKIM, DMARC, email forwarding, domain redirects. This is the new age of cold emailing. You have to you know, set up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 inboxes, so I help you set that up for free, and all you're really doing is paying for the hosting, which you would be doing anyway with Google, Zoho, and Outlook. So that right there is just hosting cost. There's no service free, you know, service fee. It's actually free. And, and yeah, the deliverability is great. And just to give you an example, a hundred inboxes on Google would cost you 700 bucks a month. With Informel, it would cost you $99, right? And we set up everything for you. So it would take you days to set up hundred inboxes with Google. And with us, it would take you basically virtually, you know, minutes. Um, and yeah, so just to kind of give you an, uh, you know, a picture of our deliverability results for, or you know, with Informel to Google professional and Microsoft professional emails, you can see we just land straight in the inbox. I mean, with great deliverability, uh, you know, people get you know crazy, crazy reply rates. Book a bunch of meetings, have tens of tens of thousands of dollars in MRR using our inboxes. So, and this is one of my campaigns here. I'm not even a bona fide cold emailer. You know, I'm pretty decent at it, but there's a lot of people that are way better than I am. But you can see 100% open rates, 24% reply rates. This is with informal inboxes, and this is just some uh, you know just so you know that I have an understanding of cold email. So. I kind of want to go over what a soft call to action is, what a hard call to action is, and examples of, of both and when to use them, okay? So what I recommend for all beginners and everyone in the beginning trying to get their first few clients, their first few results with cold email, I always, always, always recommend soft call to actions. And that's just a personal pre preference, but I know that it works and it gets you way more replies because you're not asking the other person for a lot of commitment. So. The first one is may I send over a short two minute video to show you how we do this. And I remember I was actually in a very, very saturated market. It was solar and roofing. And I would get tons of replies when I told people, hey, do you mind if, you know, if I send over a short two minute video? And that garnered me so many replies. And I actually signed my first client that way, you know, on over a $3,000 retainer, simply by just having this you know, two minute video effective value prop proposition because now they have an idea of what we do. They understand that we're competent as business owners and we can help them, right? And you show your competence in that two minute video. Right, and there's not a lot of commitment on there, and they don't have to hop on a call. They don't have to really, you know, exit out of their email, click a link, etc. They're just watching a video, preferably. I mean, technically they're clicking the link, but you know, sometimes you can embed it in the actual email itself. And even even if you don't do that, they just hop over to Loom, it redirects them, and they get to watch your video pretty quickly, and then just exit out and do whatever they want to do. May I attach a one-page case study to show you our results? So if you, you know, this is if you already have a you know clientele testimonial list, etc., then you can send them a one-page case study, and you could just plaster it with you know a video testimonial the actual results you got for the you know client in their niche etc and this is going to help you out a lot because they can actually see that you're a competent individual a competent business owner by you showing the results that you've had for other people right it's pretty self-explanatory and again not a lot of commitment they're just you're going to send them over a one-page case study doesn't mean they're going to read it but they're just agreeing to something small right and the one thing i recommend is you always tell them right right after this, this is kind of a secret is that you tell them right after hey may i send you over a short two-minute video to show you how we do this right and then right after it you can say right after watching it you're going to get x out of it and that's going to convert a lot better because they know right after that watching that video, it's going to help them in some way, either book more calls, book more meetings, you know, uh, you know, propagate their content better across social media, et cetera, right? And my third one, I made you a two-minute video to explain X, very similar to the short two-minute video, but you know, implying that you already made them one is a lot more personal. And at the end of the day, it's an evergreen video, but you can also do, you know, if you're a lot more savage, if you're a savage, right? You could just do a you know a personalized video. So as soon as you say yes, I'm interested, you just sit there and record a two minute video, address them by their name, address them by their company, etc. And there's tools to automate this. But if you want to be a real savage, you could definitely do it, um, you know, without AI and things like that. And you just say, hey, may I send it over? And I've seen this get crazy, crazy reply rates. And this actually is the same call to you know similar call to actions that I used to get 24% reply rates here. Okay, so it's always good to have a low commitment call to action. If you want to get more meetings and you say, hey, can we hop on a chat? It's not going to have the best results for you unless you have an amazing landing page, crazy client testimonials on that landing page, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have to be well known to some degree, or not even well known, but you know, known as a company to some degree where you have the credibility to show. You know, because 15 minutes is a lot of someone's time. Okay, so are you free for a 15 minute chat tomorrow at 10 a.m. Now? I see people making the mistake of sending the calendar link, and, and I do this myself just for the sake of easiness, right? And, and I'm just gonna not lie to you, I'm gonna say it's really purely because of laziness, right? Because mostly I, I use soft call to actions anyway, right? But when I do, I never, I, I just always send the link, but the best way to do it is to actually tell them, hey, I have these options available. So hey, are you free on Monday, or are you free tomorrow at 10 a.m. or the day after, right, at 1 p.m.? And they're just gonna pick between two times, and then just say, hey, book me in for the day after tomorrow at 1 p.m. And then you just book them in, you have the reminder set up and everything for them, and you're good to go, right? Very, very simple stuff. 
are you interested in booking a call to discuss further? Now, this is a little bit more vague, right? But it's a lot of commitment, but this is what a hard call to action is, right? Someone that really, really needs your service is gonna hop on a call right away, right? For example, if I, you know, I'm looking for a short form content agency that I'm gonna onboard next month or maybe the month after, right? So around that time, maybe not now, but around that time, if someone that I knew, right, and I, and I kind of was aware of existed and I saw their landing page, they had a bunch of testimonials and they're like, hey, are you open to hopping on a 30 minute call, a discovery call? I say, hell yeah, and I booked the call in because I'm a very, very hot lead. But the chances of that happening is, is pretty slim, right? It's, it's lower probability, at least, I'm not gonna say slim, but lower probability than saying, hey, may I send over a one page case study? I'm always gonna say yes to that, right? But the call, I'm probably gonna say yes to one out of 10 times, one out of 15 times, right? Depending on what I need at the time, right? And are you open to discussing this further over a 15 minute chat? Right, this is just similar to the, to the first one. Slightly interested, question mark, leave your name and number for a quick three minute call. This is probably the, the, the softest out of the hard call to actions, right? No commitments, you can see right here. So they're gonna leave their name and number, pretty easy stuff, you just call them and then you kinda do a little bit of discovery there and then on the call you book them into your, your main sales call, right? Your, your main sales funnel. So I kinda wanna also kinda help you understand the, the graph and the conversions based on the soft and hard, hard call to actions. Like I said, I always recommend soft call to actions, that's what I use, right? Always having a soft call to action where the cold email thread carries like a conversation rather than a commitment to a call will always work better than actually committing someone to a call. But I wanna show you a graph, a small illustration that I made to better explain this further. So just made this illustration to quickly show you guys. Right here on the y-axis, you have the conversion and then you have the soft call to action. So this is on a scale of one to 10, or zero to 10, I should say. So obviously the, the higher the number, the harder the call to action is. And this is the conversion. So what happens here is if you have a soft call to actions, conversions are super, super high, right? And basically the harder your call to action gets, right? The lower your conversions get. So you have a super hard call to actions, your conversions are gonna get super low, right? And then this graph just ends up looking like this. And that's exactly how it works. So obviously there is gonna be some sweet spots where if, if you're above this kind of line right here, if you're above this cross section and you have a hard call to action with a very high conversion, this, these people right here are the ones that have the craziest landing pages, craziest testimonials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? A lot of people that don't have that infrastructure, that don't have the amazing landing page and client testimonials and optimized LinkedIn profiles, everything like that, social media dialed in, SEO, all that, they're gonna have, tend to have lower right? Conversions. It's not a bad thing. It's just a reality. So when you are starting out, always, always, I always recommend to go with the conversions that are the highest with the soft call to action. So always go with soft call to action. This is the sweet spot right here because it always works no matter what you do, right? You have a good landing page, bad landing page. I mean, landing page is sort of a necessity, but the, what I mean by a bad landing page is something that doesn't have any testimonials, right? You're still always going to get replies and interested people because you have some value to provide. So this is where I recommend staying. But anyways, this is uh, the video, hard versus soft call to actions. If you have any questions, please let me know and drop them below. If you have any interesting call to actions, let me know in the comments as well. I would love to see the kind of unique call to actions uh, that, that I haven't seen before. So maybe I can use them in my cold email campaigns and you can help other people out too. So thank you for watching the video. I appreciate your time and peace out.